Randy Orton is overrated, Nia Jax is a good wrestler, WWE Divas were better than what we got right now, the great one is not the best wrestling YouTuber. Look people, I've heard it all. Now I asked you guys to give me your wrestling hot takes, and I received over a thousand of these you crazy bastards. Y'all got them hot wrestling takes and I'm here to react. I you know it's supposed to be hot in here, we gotta change the scenery. Yeah, that's bad. Wrestling is at its best right now. I can't remember the last time storylines meant this much. I don't know if it's at its best, but it's definitely better than anything we got in the past 10 years. I believe the last time people felt this way about wrestling was back in 2011 when we got John Cena versus CM Punk. And when it comes to storylines, I mean, I gotta say Gunter versus Chad Gable, that's special, and of course the entire Bloodline storyline. Other than that, I think WWE still have a long way to go. Damn, I just completely ignored AEW. Well, they have good stuff as well, I guess. Not really watching right now. They lost their biggest star, CM Punk. Cena is in his all realm of almost anything. Star power, mic skills, iconic finisher, iconic matches, accolades. Nobody comes close to him in any of those. In almost every sport, the GO debate is close, but the WWE GO debate isn't close at all. John Cena is miles ahead of the second greatest of all time. I wouldn't necessarily said miles ahead. Uh, finisher, you say, oh... Oh, you say finisher. John Cena's attitude adjustment is the best finisher in the WWE. I would disagree, respectfully. I mean, now we all love John Cena. He's definitely one of the GOATs. Might be the greatest of all time. I, I, I guess I kind of agree. But back in 2011, uh, there's no way we were wrong, right? Obviously, we hated John Cena because it was a cool thing to do. But at the same time, how can you love the dude in 2010 and 2011? How can you watch John Cena versus the Nexus and be like, yeah, that is a good business decision. That is a great booking decision. But you know, now when I think about it, The Rock, John Cena, Hulk Hogan, John Cena stayed in the WWE the longest, he still returns. I think Stone Cold Steve Austin is a real competitor, but John Cena is also really liked by kids, so yeah, I guess I, I guess I agree. Brock Lesnar winning the Money in the Bank was not actually bad, but more of a surprise in many good ways. It did give us one time beatboxer Brock for a segment, which was pretty hilarious, and I personally enjoyed his Money in the Bank reign. Well, when it first happened, I hated it. Looking back, wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, we wrestling fans, we have this very bad habit of overreacting and for a very good reason more than half the time we are right when wwe do something really really stupid but this this was fine i mean money in the bank in general does it mean a lot anyway nowadays is Damien Priest going to win? I hope so. Kane is a director of operations. Wasn't even bad. He was so entertaining and it wasn't a downgrade to his character as fans made it out to be. Looking back, sure. The corporate Kane character was good. It was entertaining. He did a great job with the character. But you see, people, the problem was... People want to remember this version of Kane. So when you compare that version of Kane, which kind of felt like he's not even human, I get where people are coming from. So I half agree, but not completely. We should be so much more grateful for the wrestling continuing at such a good level during the pandemic. Well, yes and no. First of all, WWE are not doing it for the fans like they claim. Like, obviously, it's a business. So they did it because uh, they needed to. The show goes on. You know, the, the network wants it, so that's a thing. But sure, yeah, it was better than expected. Fans are such a big part of wrestling, so the fact that WWE did so good without him is nuts. Triple H, as an in-ring performer, is very underrated. I feel like he's not underrated by the fans. We all know how great Triple H is. But for whatever reason, he's really underrated by wrestling personalities. Bret Hart hates Triple H. I don't even know why. If WWE always listens to the fans, the company would be worse than TNA. Sometimes bad moments need to happen. Preach, my boy, preach. You go, girl. Another stuff that I should not be saying. I agree. I agree 100% and it's a point I made uh, years ago, I believe, or maybe even recently. I don't remember. Um, uh, here's the thing, people. It's supposed to mimic real life. And life ain't always 
Rainbows and sunshines. Is that a Rocky quote, my dudes? Sometimes wrestling needs to piss us off, you know? It needs to happen. Then we have these good moments, we're happy. Just like life is all about ups and downs, wrestling should be the same way. Now, sometimes we get unnecessary burials, stupid moments that are, you know, unexcusable. But when it comes to not the right person winning a match, let's take WrestleMania, for example. Cody versus Roman Reigns. Sure, we hated it, but at the same time, Maybe it needed to happen. Maybe it's going to tell a pretty good story. Ups and downs. WWE book Dolph Ziggler right. He could have been a multi-time WrestleMania main eventer. Not sure if multiple time WrestleMania main eventer, but y'all know how much I like Dolph Ziggler. One of my favorites of all time, to be honest. Uh, yes, he could have been huge. He could have been something like LA Knight is right now. He was maybe not as over but pretty close and WWE just dropped the ball for whatever reason maybe if Triple H was in control back then maybe it would be a different story right now but whatever happened happened and uh, Dolph Ziggler is not even on television right now I just spit on the microphone star power and character are more important than wrestling ability star power is what brings viewers in and character keeps the viewer attention ah uh, yeah I think that's not even a hot take you can tell me all about these great AEW matches, five-star matches, Dave Meltzer creaming himself in his dirty little room. Yeah, I don't, I don't care if there's no good story behind it, if there's not a, you know, big character behind it. Ellen Knight is a very good example. Now, that's not my opinion. Some people even claim he's not that good in the ring. I think he's great, but if he wasn't, you know what? I wouldn't necessarily care that much. I'm here for his promos, I'm here for the moments. If Robbie came to ours, it will be the best wrestling show in the world. I disagree. It would be a lot better? Uh, absolutely. No question about it. The thing is, if it's still a Judgment Day promo in the beginning, Sammy and Kevin Owens interrupts, we get Cody or Riddle or someone else, and it turns into a six-man tag team match. If the formula stays the same, I don't think two hours are going to help. The Miz is the most underrated WWE superstar of all time. Uh, no. He is underrated, sure. He is more like unappreciated, maybe underappreciated. I think people now especially know that The Miz is great. Unfortunately, WWE are not, you know, booking him right. I love Dominic Mysterio, I think he's one of the best heels in WWE right now, proven by the arena filled with booze every time he speaks. I think once he surpasses his mic skills a bit, he could be one of the company's top guys. But the thing is, he's still very young and he cannot be a main eventer in the WWE or anywhere else. He is in a perfect position right now, but once he gets older, more wrinkly, puts on some muscle, I think that's a possibility, but... There's also a big chance this could be Dominic Mysterio's peak because what he's doing right now is almost unmatched. Kurt Angle is the funniest wrestler of all time. I'm gonna have to disagree. He's definitely funny for me. Personally, it's Sami Zayn because the delivery is so believable. He's like a character from The Office. Nia Jax is actually a great addition to Raw and I just stopped reading. That's what you get. You brought up... Nia Jax. Okay, I'll be nice. He's talking about how great of a heel Nia Jax is going to be. We ain't talking about Nia. She's like a Voldemort right now. We ain't talking about Nia. Karen Cross is not as bad as everyone says he is. He's good in the ring. He's a great character. Great presentation. He just needs to win more rivalries and be booked like a dominant force. Yeah, but at the same time, his entrance is so unique. Everything that happens after the entrance is just kind of there. You know, and uh, it's hard to take him seriously anymore because he keeps losing, just like we said. Batista deserved better than what he got in 2014. Yeah, that was... That sucked, and that's the problem I have with some wrestling fans. Appreciate the legends while you still got them, you know, because now, looking back, you regret all the comments you made about Blutista. Wade Barrett should have been a multiple-time world champion. Well, let's get back to John Cena 2010. The Nexus got buried. If they didn't, maybe it would be a different story right now, but, but unfortunately, it didn't work out. Hulk Hogan is one of the greatest of all time and deserves to be on the Mount Rushmore of professional wrestling. How is that even a hot take. The man that really, you know, got wrestling to the next level. I'm not talking about him personally, that lying sneaky bastard, and other comments he made in the past. But as a wrestling character, when it comes to Hulkamania or his run in WCW in NWO, it's just, it revolutionized wrestling. The current IC title is the best looking IC title ever. Nope. 
it is a nut. It's the white strap. LA night, yeah, is overrated. What's with this? What's this emoji right here? Are you giving yourself a thumbs up? Because it's, it's a big fat thumbs down is what I'm giving you, boy. What are you talking about? I hate this whole overrated conversation. What does that even mean nowadays? The only way I'm going to agree someone is truly overrated is if he gets more five-star matches from Dave Meltzer than anyone else for no apparent reason. Kenny Omega is probably overrated. Is he bad? Probably not. Overrated? Well, when you have more five-star matches, 69-star matches than the entire WWE in its history, maybe you're overrated. LA Knight, I think what he's doing is absolutely special. And maybe you could say, well, anyone else could take that gimmick and make it work. Maybe, maybe not, maybe yes. I don't know, but they didn't. LA Knight did. LA Knight really isn't anything special. Well, well, come on now. Are we going to turn on every single superstar that gets over now? Roman is overrated. Come on. I, I, I told you, hot takes, not bad opinions. How is he overrated? In what way, shape, or form? I think CM Punk fans are a bunch of entitled incels. Ooh. I don't know, man. The more I think about it, the more I listen to interviews, opinions, the more I think about what happened, I feel like CM Punk is not entirely to blame. I feel like he has a temper. I feel like he is problematic at times, you know, I get it. But there is also a bunch of wrestlers in WWE or AEW who appreciate Punk, so I believe if you show the guy respect, he's gonna show it back. And if you disrespect the dude, he's just not gonna take any shit, you know. CM Punk doesn't deserve all the hate he's getting. Yeah, I believe so. I truly believe so. I think blaming him for the entire situation is dumb. But you know what, people? I'm just waiting for the guy to return to the WWE so we can all forget about it. That's all I got for you today. You know what, guys? This was actually more fun than I thought it would be. Disagreeing with my viewers. Mm, so much fun. But if you like this video, if you want more, let me know in the comments below. Make sure to click that like button. Subscribe if you already didn't. Tickle the little ball sack, the notification bell. The great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure.